morning. You know, there are a lot of things people say that you can't do in an EV. Camping, for example. But often, EVs are actually better for that than regular gasoline cars. So, before I get up, hey, future K, hmm? can I get a cup of tea? Oh, great, hot. <sighs> You know, there are some stereotypes about being a queer woman in the Pacific Northwest. You know, outdoorsy, sandal-wearing, granola-eating, wearing plaid all the time. Clearly, I break those stereotypes. But, one of the ones that I really enjoy is being outdoors. And people often say that EVs are no good for camping. But I don't think they're right. Because EVs now have the ability to keep you warm inside just off the main battery they have the ability to power things now this is a kia ev6 that we have on loan and it has vehicle to load now we have a whole video about vehicle to load and vehicle to grid and i'm going to drop a link down below to that so if you want more detail on what the difference is and what those are then follow the link but today we're just gonna have a bit of a chat about what this might mean going forwards. But before we do, I'm going to make myself that cup of tea. do i'd like to take a minute just sit right there i'll tell you how you can sponsor a channel called transport evolved yeah that, that doesn't really work but what does is our coverage of news and reviews so like subscribe and check out the end of the video where you can find out how you can help keep us independent and free from me doing poor quality raps Camping is incredibly popular in the US and in Europe. Over 41 million people went camping last year in the US. Now, some people will argue that you can't camp in an EV, but I would say that actually the experience is better. I've been camping on trips where the weather has been, shall we say, inclement, and my tent has not entirely stood up to the battering of, say, a gale force wind. Being able to stay in the car and keep it warm and dry and cosy? I know, I know, there's something about getting back to nature which is wonderful, but there's also something about getting back to nature and being comfy, which is appealing as you get a little bit older. So, March in the Pacific Northwest. Not the warmest time of year, hence me getting my coat and cuddling my cup of tea. But it is really beautiful out here. We have our tent, we come out most years, spend some time out in the wilds with, you know, very little with us. One of the things that we bring every year is one of these. A Tranger. I've had one of these since I was about 15. This is, in fact, the same one I got when I was about 15. It burns pretty much anything that is liquid and flammable. Uh, so, usually you use it with methylated spirit in England, which is wood alcohol. And the other thing that we have is a biolite, so that we have a second stove, because sometimes it's useful to be able to boil water and, you know, cook at the same time. So, that burns wood. But one of the things that we've discovered since moving here is that the combination of forest fires and climate change have meant that a lot of the year we can't use the biolite and it is sketchy to use any kind of flammable thing that might release sparks because you don't want to be releasing sparks. Quite often there are bans on campfires, wood-burning stoves while we're out camping. And so, one of these may be the future of cooking out here. 
Now, there is certainly something to be said for cooking over an open flame. It, it adds a certain je ne sais quoi, specifically smoky flavours and carbon to your food. But being able to come out here and use electrical appliances which do not cause fires is an enormous advantage up here in the Pacific Northwest and anywhere where forest fires are common. But it's not just out here that these are useful. If you live in an area, as much of us do now, where power cuts are not maybe the norm, but are happening increasingly frequently, then being able to power your home from your car is really useful. Now, because we've already made a video on vehicle to grid and vehicle to load, I'm not going to go hugely into the difference. But vehicle to load is in general much smaller, it allows you to power things like this kettle here, or a laptop, you know, small appliances, the kind of thing that if you've got a power cut at home you could keep your fridge running. Vehicle to grid allows you to balance grid demand, which is a whole different thing, and I know some of you will be worried about using your battery in that way, but we have actually covered this in a really long chat that we had with Honda, who did a big pilot project. And the TLDR, for those of you who don't want to watch the video link down below, is that it really doesn't hurt the battery. In fact, it's probably actually good for it. The Kia EV6 that we have here on loan will produce 1.9 kilowatts for about 36 hours. That is long enough for most people to be able to survive a power cut. And it will keep your fridge or some other similar appliance powered for much longer. The European version will produce 3.6 kilowatts. Now I'm unsure why the American version produces only 1.9 kilowatts. Obviously Kia don't answer that kind of a question. They just say there are differences between the two cars and that's, that's as far as it goes. But for both camping and for short power outages, it's a really useful feature. But that said, the other really handy thing that you can do with this vehicle is charge another EV. Now obviously you're not going to want to drain your battery in this car to charge another one, but if someone's stranded you can give them a couple of hours of trickle charging which will get them maybe to a charger and allow them to charge up there and you can obviously top up in a revoltingly short amount of time. Now obviously the Kia EV6 is not the only vehicle with vehicle to load capability and this kind of capability has been around for a long time. The original Nissan Leaf and the iMeve, in fact I think pretty much all Chademo equipped cars, had the capability of using bi-directional charging and if you had a suitable adapter then you could power your home or appliances from it. Similarly, there are other cars coming to market which have vehicle to load or vehicle to grid capability. Other cars that have vehicle to load capability or that will have it include the Ford F-150 Lightning with its special charging adapter which will allow you to power your entire home, the Fisker Ocean, the Volkswagen ID 3, 4, 5 and 6, and other cars built on the same platform as the EV6, so that's the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and the Genesis GV60, both of which are built on the eGMP platform. And these kinds of features, which at the moment are somewhat of a edge case use scenario, are things that are going to become more and more common. You're going to see more and more features built around the fact that you can plug into your car wherever you are and use that power. I can bring my office out here, apart from the fact that there is no cell phone signal, which is not sad, but I have a laptop in the car. I can plug it in, work here. I could work here all day, probably all night, all day again, for several days, and I wouldn't be out of charge. Now, is that something that I want to do? No. What I actually want to do is go for a walk, um, and then have a bit more of a play with this on these rather fun roads. But this kind of shift in the way that we live is really going to be important going forward. And you know what? Being able to do this without burning stuff, that's really handy. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for watching, and we will be back with more soon. Now, as you may have gathered, I am not in the studio today, and I do not have the teleprompter. So, I have my phone though, so if you like this video be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to leave your thoughts below or in our free to join discord chat room. If you haven't already make sure you're subscribed to this channel and our other channel Transport Evolved Take 2 and give the bell a gentle ding to make sure you're told when our next video goes live. 
thanks on behalf of the entire TE crew go out to the folks on my right, hopefully not in the lake, for being our 15 to $49 a month supporters. Special thanks to our $50 a month patrons Chris Maxwell, Bennett Elder, Brian Newton, David Kitchen, Michael Goad, Ricky Leong, Andrew Martin, Guido Drahota, Brophy Wolf, Tesla in the Gong, Gordon C, Stephen O'Donoghue, Kyle Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Raging Fellows, Rory Litwin, Anonymous Freak, Jim Burness, Zachary Courtney, Chris Center, and Danny Hyde. And our deepest gratitude to our $100 a month Patreon supporters, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, Joe Bresney, JP Fagerback, Will Graylin, Matthew Drobnak, John Lyons, Christopher Lee Jones, Andrew Glenn, Paul Conway, Ellery Hensley, and of course, Ian. Want your name in that list? You can join Patreon at the link below. Support us using the YouTube join button or show us your love through Bitcoin, Kofi, or our cool swag store. Links are lurking down there. And thanks for joining me. And as always, keep evolving. <laughs>